There could be many names for what I am, but I have chosen one, conjured. I channel a specific type of energy, the numinous, as in relating to the divine. I am a member of Homo Religious, the unfortunate beings that, on an ontological level, exist in connection with the sacred. Why is it unfortunate, you ask, to be one with God? Because God is a broken being. You see, conduits are a necessity for the Almighty. Strange, yes, that they would need anything at all, but it is the truth. I am essential for this universe's survival, and, here's another truth, I wish I wasn't. I feel safe coming forward now, with other conduits telling their tales on the internet, to share my own experience, try to give you a taste of how the divine feels, what God's mind is like, at times, it can be very frightening. But what scares me most of all about the visions, is not that I have them, but that for God to dream it, it has to exist somewhere. I will do my best to tell you of these visions in full, but at times words fail me. I hope you will understand, that our minds cannot comprehend such things in scale, or scope until we see them and I pray, dear reader, that you never, ever have to see them. The first vision I received was thus, I am greeted by the stars, sliding past me like the introduction to a movie, I am paralyzed. The darkness around me is oppressive, despite the myriad of burning lighthouses from galaxies far away. I cannot look anywhere but forward. As I continue my unrelenting propulsion, there is a feeling that overtakes me, anxiety. It is not yet fear, but a sneaking feeling, something crawling up my spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, beckoning me to look behind myself, whispering in my ear about horrors to come. I cannot indulge the feeling, instead looking ahead, staring into the abyss as I approach something in the distance. As I grow closer, the sound of brass begins to overtake me. It's a tune I remember hearing from my childhood, my mother and father waltzing in the kitchen, a cigarette dangling from my mother's fingers, but no, I never had this memory. My mother didn't smoke. My father didn't wear suits. I was born in 1992. This is a feeling, some strange nostalgia, that God must have conjured. Can God long for things? The music is static in my ears I as I come upon the scene, before me is a lava crash and horror I have spent years trying to describe. It looked as such, immense. Towering. Gigantic. Beyond the size of a planet, it perched on Jupiter like it was a child clinging to an art installation outside of a mall in upstate New York. Its form resembled a giant chameleon, its maw stretched wide, giant fangs dripping with the swirling mists of the galaxies. It blinked at me as it unrolled its tongue and wiped the smog from Jupiter's atmosphere, revealing to me a beauty I cried upon seeing, so stark was the contrast to the beast. Outlined by the creature's black, bulging, scaly body was the scene of nostalgia, the mother in the kitchen, the father holding her, waltzing, and now I see, a son. He sits at the table with his orange juice and toast, the butter melting slowly onto the bread. He smiles wide as his parents dance, his father humming, his mother pressing her lips into the collar of his father's shirt, the starched lines in sharp contrast to the softness of her painted, red lips. He giggles and gets up to join them, the teal kitchen framing the scene so perfectly, the chameleon's tail wrapping around the outside, pressing the scene tightly as I continue to barrel towards it in the sky. God was never a boy, were they? Perhaps they were. Perhaps they've been everyone, everything, every moment. I feel the anxiety again as I watch the boy join his parents in their dance, his tiny fingers grabbing onto their hands, the family swing back and forth as the jazz tune shifts, crackling beginning to overtake the soft melody. My heart reels as emotion overwhelms me in the darkness of space. What was this mood, my god? Why tell your conduit a story of humanity, when they are human? Do you long for that too? Or have you begun to feel as weak as we are? The chameleon wiped the scene with his long, spiked tongue once more, the pale pink washing out the nostalgia, the atmospheric smog returning. As the vision fades, I see the beast take the planet in its claws and crush it. The second vision I received was thus. After contemplating the first vision, wondering if God had a message for me, or if he merely needed to convey something to me, an understanding of sorts, I began to await the second. When it came, I wished that I had not. I am standing in the grasslands, fast music plays around me, the beat beneath it intense, strong, the melody is too quick, too filled with static. I watch in suspended horror as a lion bounds across the grass, striking down a baby gazelle. I am brought closer to the scene, watching its mighty jaws rend the animal into pieces, blood seeping into the dried soil, the bones of the tiny animal cracking beneath the predator's claws. 
Its mother calls from afar, keeping her distance. I am made to look upon the spectacle with eyes wide, unblinking. I feel as if I could retch onto the high grass, spilling guts to join the coagulating crimson puddle. The lion turns to me as it tears a chunk of flesh from the gazelle's thigh, throwing its head back and swallowing it without care. Its giant eyes bore into me, tearing holes into my own flesh. I feel as if I am the one being hunted, eviscerated, consumed. The gazelle still twitches, pitiful electricity in its brain stem eking out a final cry to the universe that cut its life so short, reminded vast land of its mortality, its weakness. I wonder if God feels this way too, predator and prey, dance of the ageless, life told and told. Are they haunted by the overwhelming knowledge that things must end? The chest of the gazelle opens of its own accord, revealing its heart, still beating. The delicate tissue of the heart rends in two as a seed appears in the left ventricle, opening like a bean pressed between paper towels, taped to the windowsill of a small child's home. I feel the anxiety again, stronger this time. Sprouting, the two tiny leaves push upwards, begging for sunlight. I can feel its desperate reach for sustenance. It continues, unfolding itself into a sunflower. The lion ignores the plant as it continues to tear into the gazelle's stomach, sharp teeth ripping into soft organs. The sunflower turns towards the beaming sun, and it begins to wilt just as quickly as it rose up, the bending becoming black, becoming death, becoming inevitability. I feel the bile rise in my stomach, my body suddenly present. I am back in my bedroom, where the vision began. I run to the toilet and throw up, a single sunflower seed floating above the acid. The third vision I received was thus. I am beneath the sea, the music is becoming harsher in its tone, again, too fast, again, the static overtakes it. I am anxious upon arrival, a tinge of confusion, almost frustration, grows inside my stomach like the sunflower from before. I had been dreading this moment. In the vision, I am floating in the ocean. Waves lap miles overhead. I cannot see them, but I know their presence. I do not feel as if I am swimming, but, instead, drowning almost too slowly to notice. I can feel the presence of many living things all around me. I am floating downward, but my vision remains steady, as if daylight existed beneath the ocean, noon sun beaming just above my head. Below me I see a coral reef, an impossibility this low down. Fish streak between the many folds, reminding me of the pulses in a human brain, that pitiful electricity. I am getting closer as I realize the resemblance is not a resemblance, but a fact. I am floating past the edge of the reef, down, confronted now with the giant smooth face of a creature, it resembles a human, but far too large. Its head is without a scalp, the reef and its inhabitants standing in for the brain. It opens its eyes as I continue to float down, stopping just before it. I gaze into the beautiful, green eyes, the long lashes, tiny fish swimming between them. It opens its mouth in a scream, bubbles bursting past its teeth, a tiger shark darting out. I feel the music shift, the water pressure now evident. I feel the crushing weight of its eyes on me, the mouth, the scream, the lack of oxygen. The fish in the reef slow in their movement, some stopping their travels altogether. The bulbous eyes of a puffer fish land on me, its puckered mouth opening and closing. It inflates in slow motion, its tiny fins flapping helplessly against its now bloated body. I watch as it floats down from the reef, now in front of me. It is so absurd in its shape and movement, that I want to laugh, the strange twinkling notes of the music floating around me, same as the bubbles still drifting from the giant creature's mouth. I watch as the pufferfish bursts into sparkling dust, floating down to land on the near human face. When it settles, I watch a single, giant tear fall from the unsettling green eyes, crafting a trail in the dust, tumbling in the water to the depths below. Does God ever get lonely, I wonder? The fourth vision I received was thus, I am lying in the middle of an intersection in Hanover, Vermont. I do not know how to tell you I know this, but I do. The rain is beating against my face, the music has become mostly static now, but I can hear bits and pieces of a melody I knew once. God knew once. Someone knew once. I am completely and utterly alone. I do not even feel the numinous with me. The asphalt is still warm from the day, but the sun is hiding now, the moon obscured behind clouds. Perhaps it is hiding too. I can feel the anger in the rain, how it stings my skin. I am very aware of my body, my fragile, human body, how it bends and breaks, and becomes and ages and wants to be anything but what it is. I long for survival, but have no comprehension of what that means. The rain beats harder, the pine trees bowing to me, 
dropping offerings in the form of sharp needles, giant cones, all tumbling, collecting around me in a vision that feels like a tape skipping, rewinding, glitching. The offerings pile higher and higher until I feel I have become them, become the earth, the soil, the pine trees and their giant trunks. The music is skipping too. I am wondering if God has forgotten to clean their record player. Does God have a record player? My thoughts feel like the undergrowth struggling to gather rainwater dripping off the needles. Inside myself, the anxiety and confusion from previous visions begins to morph into fear. The same fear I know, somehow, that the chameleon felt, that the gazelle felt, that the face in the water felt. Why were they all so afraid? The mound of pine cones and needles returns itself to the trees that offered it, destroying itself backwards piece by piece. Construction had felt easy, albeit riddled with hiccups, but this, the undoing, it feels like battle. I want to grab hold of the offerings and tie them to myself to bury them in my stomach cavity, push the needles through my skin until I can see the other side, feel that they are truly real around me. But I cannot stop it as they roll across the asphalt, as they spin themselves back onto branches. Inside myself, again, I feel something new. It is an emptiness. A nothingness. Can God gift you something and then leave you with it? Can God give it all? The rain begins to cut into my flesh, dissolving my skin and muscles until I am bones in the intersection. The stoplight, now visible, blinks at me. A sign indicating Johnson Street. Hangs, swinging in the wind, before it blurs, becoming random letters and numbers, punctuation. There is the sound of a car horn, tires squealing. I awake in my bedroom, soaked in sweat. The fifth vision that I received was thus, I can hear voices. They're saying things I don't understand. There is a piano, a few notes at a time, but broken apart so wholly that I feel broken with them. It is the first song, the smiling boy with toast, but now it is that no longer. I feel the beauty rush into my stomach and tears fall down my face. All I can see is that memory, the memory of a memory, chameleon wrapped, shifting, its swirling eyes staring into me, drowning me beneath the atmosphere. My heart skips a beat with this static. I am afraid, so very afraid. I want to call to God, to ask him to make it stop. I wish to tell him that I cannot handle this. I am sobbing now, head in my hands. After what feels like infinity, time both always and never, I unfold myself and am greeted with a twisting, shifting landscape. It is grass and desert and snowy mountains, it is humans and animals and plants and bugs and bacteria, it is water and fire and earth and air. It is everything. It swirls around me in a cascading display, giant torrent of emotion so overwhelming I cannot process anything but have to process everything, all the same. I can hear the numinous in my ear now, the voice of God is speaking to me, but I cannot understand them above the roar of the universe, the static and white noise filling my senses until I can taste time itself, rotten and putrid and metallic on my swollen tongue. I gasp as the music starts back again, just as it had in the first vision. I am blinking away a deluge of tears, the pain I inherited. Skipping, again, the torrent, resuming. Pictures, emotions, senses, the numinous. I am frozen in terror and awe as it overtakes me. Please, God, I want to cry, take this from me. I cannot bear this burden, cannot bear myself enough to become the nothingness this everything needs. I am not large enough a being. Aren't you, God? Can you not take this from me? Why did you give it to me in the first place? Another gasp, clarity. I am in a rocking chair, in a cabin. Snow falls outside as the fire roars. The record player spins. I rock. In my hand is a warm drink. I can taste lemon and honey. In the air I smell cinnamon. I take a deep breath. I am human. I am something. I am not a god, but I am also not nothing. I feel relief. Until it begins again, anew, terrible and horrible in its eyes, I am being crushed underneath a weight of memories I do not have. There is something crawling up my back, its tiny fingers pressing into me, leaving imprints on my bones. I cannot breathe as the torrent of everything becomes so great that it turns into nothingness, blackness, cascading, water-like, over me. I have forgotten what the rocking chair and the cabin and the fire and the drink and my being human feels like. I know I have forgotten it and it becomes as large as the darkness that haunts me, this forgetting. The music stops and I awake, sobbing, my back against the kitchen cabinets, my tea kettle screaming as I wish I could. The sixth vision I received was thus, I am in nothing. 
perhaps it is something, shifting slowly beneath me like grains of sand rubbing against one another in the hot desert. I stop. What does the desert feel like, I wonder. I know it has feeling, has substance, has meaning. The numinous is faint around me, the world white and formless. I hear ocean waves, and I wonder what I'm doing here. Who made this? Can it be made? Is it anything? I feel quick and yet slow, so wrapped up in the folds of space-time, that I have become them, have become reality, nothingness, the quark inside every atom, so tiny and infinitesimal am I in my own meaning, my own impact. The numinous grows stronger around me, enveloping me. I cannot feel my body, instead I feel time. I feel momentum, movement. Is it moving? It has to be. It does not stop does not halt its march ever forward, I can hear the faint drum beats rumbling beneath my own numbness. The torrent from before, the everything, it begins to stream again, trying to overwhelm, but I cannot connect with it, cannot feel its presence as I did before. I am the whiteness, the space, the time, the nothingness, so detached from the everything, that I wonder, if I exist at all. The torrent slows as I watch stars burn themselves out, the universe becoming as I feel, empty. Bits of matter drift aimlessly in space, never to contact one another again, the innate connection within them severed by a distance and an incorrigible issue, they cannot speak of what was. They do not understand, do not comprehend, do not remember, what it was like to have momentum, to carry energy, to be something but inert, formless, without purpose or movement. I am beginning to connect again, as the whiteness of my world blends with the blackness of the universe. Slowly, I drift into the space between them, watching as they merge, and swirl and become something new. Inside of me, I feel something growing, pushing, the music begins again, so faint I could have mistaken it for more static, but I cling to it inside of myself. On my bare skin, I feel the barbed tongue of the chameleon, wiping away the smog of my atmosphere. My chest cavity opens, sunflower sprouting, wilting, returning to close me up. The pitiful electricity swims in my hardening brain, the synapses failing, loading, popping into nothingness. I feel the last pine cone drift away from me, returning to the blotchy trees, no longer real in my mind's eye. And the static returns in full, hearing nothing, I have become the visions. The numinous has left me here, in the center of everything. I feel as if I inhabit all. I have become the becoming. What is it that God needed to say? To create. To give. I am halted. Stopped. I have reached the event horizon, the nothing, the no thing. It is all dissolving, and I cannot feel, anymore. The thoughts drift like the matter, aimlessly, forgetting what it was like to have momentum, to be something. I am left, stunned, empty like the vast void of the cosmos. It is here, and I am utterly alone. Where will God be at the end of time, I wonder. You don't have to be religious, to connect with the numinous. It is all around us. You may not believe me and my visions, but I do not dream. I see. I share these things with you in the hopes of finding other conduits. I pray that I am not alone in this experience. I need to find out what God is trying to tell me. I have found little solace in my own musings. Please, if you know what they're saying, tell me. Until then, do not think of the things God does, do not seek the numinous, do not try to connect with it. You need not be born as I was, with this ontological condition. God can call upon any of us, I am sure. And believe me, dear reader, you do not want to know what God dreams of, 